on everyone welcome to the doug show live stream it is friday january 10th i believe and um, now that i'm looking at myself in the camera here i see i'm not very color coordinated as you could tell <laughs> i just put on whatever whatever i just picked up so i'm gonna have to change later got a couple things going on Today we're going to have a normal uh, normal Friday here. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Always good to get the confirmation. I think people can hear me. Last week I had a little uh, little issue with some of the microphones. So I double checked that today. You know, we learn each week. We try to do a better job than we did the previous week. Sometimes we make the same mistakes after we forget. But... We're getting better with it. So we're going to talk about some affiliate marketing stuff. We'll talk about Amazon associate topics, maybe tell a couple stories and uh, just some random stuff going on today. So I'm going to talk um, about Ron Stefanski. He's crushing it and he's going to be uh, doing a little bit more with his YouTube channel. I'll give him a shout out there. Stuart and Sean, what's up? Thanks for the confirmation on the audio. This is a decent microphone, like relatively inexpensive, um, the Audio Technica, Technica 2100, but if you have it plugged in and um, the software doesn't select the right microphone to use, then um, it doesn't matter what you got plugged in over here. So, but we're doing good today. Uh, a couple other things, I'm gonna give a shout out to another channel, Money Lab. So I'll talk a little bit more about that, but let me know in the chat over there or if you're watching the replay later about uh, whether you're already a uh, like a fan of the Money Lab brand, um, and I'll go a little bit more into it. But hopefully, I'll be doing some collaborations and some work with uh, Matt over there from Money Lab, and then I'll answer a few questions if they are you know relevant to the topics we're talking about. So a couple cool things I'm going to jump into um, some success stories for next week. So if you're on my email list, you have been experiencing um, the free mini course this week where I kind of walk you through, kind of get you up to speed for um, like starting or growing your site. A lot of it is around like mindset and like the goals that you have. And then we, we kind of branch out into like picking a niche and sort of figuring that out. And the emails, if you have received them, let me know in the chat or, or comments, they are quite motivating. A lot of people shoot me an email and just say, hey, I really identify with the experience that you had sitting in traffic, trying to uh, do a good job at your job and uh, just dealing with the corporate world out there. It sucks. Like that's the consensus <laughs> generally. A, a few people like their job or their corporate job. I think a lot of times it, it depends on like who you're working with and the amount of time that you're you're working. So it really sucks when, um, so for example, it's like around the holidays or something like that. And you have to put in extra time, you know, over your normal 40 or 45 hours. And you're putting in like whatever, 55 hours, 60 hours. I remember a couple times my bosses were asking me to work on like Christmas Eve. We were doing shift work. So it wasn't just like Christmas Eve. It was like um, like 3 to 10 p.m. or something kind of bananas like that. So anyway, you have been experiencing those emails. Thanks. If you're on the email list, if you're not, you should sign up. And I will also note that uh, next week we got a few cool success stories. And those are coming out because number one, I wanted to get some updates from people. Number two, the course uh, Five Figure Niche Site is going to open up for enrollment starting on Monday through Friday next week. That's January 13th through the 17th. I do some enrollment periods through the year, four of them, so quarterly. Um, January is a great time to get started. Probably if you can put in one hour um, per day, five to seven days a week for a few months this year, 
there's an extremely high chance that you will probably be making good money by the end of the year. Good money is relevant uh, or it's uh, relative to like what you think is uh, decent money. But I know some people that have like six figure incomes and they're very happy to just be making like a hundred extra or 200 extra dollars per month. That's enough to go out to eat an additional time. Or if you save up um, each each month, you can maybe take a, a long weekend vacation. So anyway, I talked to Christy. I just caught up with her earlier this week. Talked to Marty yesterday. And uh, Marty quit his job. Marty McLeod, he's a friend of the show. He's been on many times. Done some guest posts uh, or some writing, not guest posts, but he's done some writing for me at Niche Site Project. And uh, Marty quit his job back in September, October of 2019. He's making about 5K per month, roughly. So that is uh, roughly a valuation of $150,000. So he's been grinding, doing the work, and he has some excellent results to show for it. Talk to uh, Adrian. Actually, I'm going to be talking to Adrian Diaz later today, which will be good to get an update from him. I think he's crossed over the $1,000 per month mark. And Marcus, newcomer. Um, Marcus um, is a student in the course as well. Just crossed over $1,000 per month. And he's looking to uh, get involved with a mastermind group. So we, we talk about that in a whole video. And then we talk about his success story too. So anyway, pretty pretty good crop of like success stories coming up. I haven't decided if I'm going to publish them all next week. I might just do it because um, why wait? You know why 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 wait? Just get them out while they're hot. Um, one of the things that I end up doing because I work pretty far ahead, um, pretty often. I work far ahead, so sometimes I'll record say a success story interview in. January and then I don't publish it till April and it's not necessarily timely but it's kind of cool to hear the story shortly after like we tell it just so it's a little bit more relevant right then some people are curious about that stuff in fact I get questions a couple times a week hey does the keyword golden ratio work do Amazon affiliate sites still work and so on which is a you know those are all fair questions because things change over time and these very fresh stories people are making that much money in December um, just weeks ago like you can maybe trust it a little bit more than a success story from years ago although I try and keep it rather evergreen uh, for the most part so anyway I got some cool success stories coming up next week and there's a there's a few more that are just in the pipeline as well. So that's pretty awesome. Looking forward to uh, publishing those. And people love these interviews. So really, really hope that we'll be able to keep putting more success stories out there. All right, thanks everyone for the thumbs up and liking the video. So we have uh, Anwar, what's up? The old man, Alwayne, got Mark, Michael, uh, Chu, Cool. So other thing, I'm just going to talk about a couple books in a second. But before we move on, I want to let you know that this live stream is brought to you in part by Ezoic. And Ezoic is a software platform that helps website owners like you make more money from their sites. Ezoic is not just, um, I thought it was just like a display ad network or something like that. I, I didn't really understand until I started talking with uh, some of the folks at the company to help me out and understand in the whole thing. So Ezoic uses a machine learning, artificial intelligence to provide a better user experience and serve the right ads at the right time. It does a lot of testing as well. So it'll test the ads, the locations of the ads, the types of ads to optimize the revenue. And over time, it'll get better and better. That's machine learning. That is AI. That is how it works. So it makes a lot of the... Uh, just like placing ads in certain spots. It makes it much, much easier. They also just rolled out their site speed accelerator, which I started testing yesterday. And I'll probably be doing a lot more talking about it once I get 
some details, but it takes a little while for the DNS propagation stuff to happen. So I haven't got to test it fully yet, but I'm hoping that I'll see great results from optimizing the images, improving the lazy load, taking care of any sort of minifying or optimization for the CSS, HTML, and all those other uh, acronyms out there. So Ezoic, check it out. Thanks for the sponsorship. We do appreciate it. And if you do have a site that is like off display ads um, primarily, you should definitely, definitely check out Ezoic. So Michael says it's the first time that you've been on live. So that's awesome. You're thanking me for the content as well. Thank you for the support. And I'm gonna you know, skip around on a couple questions here and there. And I, I think it's great if people can answer questions that are uh, asked out there while I'm talking about other stuff. So one thing that I want to talk about is books. So how, how many people out there are like avid readers or uh, listen to audiobooks? I've been doing more audiobooks just because I was on the road, road tripping with Georgie, who's sitting in my feet. So if you hear some jingling, it's her shaking her collar around she seems to do that whenever I'm recording something the audiobooks made the trip and the driving go by very quick I mean it was so enjoyable I have been on a I enjoy comedy quite a bit stand-up comedy sketch um, that sort of stuff and there are a few books and I, I've mentioned them in a couple live streams but skipped ahead um, for a few and didn't mention uh, some so I listened to uh, the David Spade um, audio book, which I think it's called Almost Funny. And then there was a new one. Someone actually recommended it on one of the live streams. And it's a Polaroid guy in a Snapchat world. And that was only an audio book. So they, they didn't even do a written version. So it was just on Audible. And there were, there were a couple like overlapping stories, but both of them were really funny. I think David Spade's pretty hilarious overall. I've been a fan for a while. Um, and just started like watching more of a stand up recently. I also listened to uh, Tina Fey's book, Bossy Pants, which I enjoyed a lot. I think I liked the Tina Fey's book more than Amy Poehler. Um, her book is good, but I think Tina Fey uh, it was just a little funnier, a little sillier, but yeah, very interesting in both, actually, in all of those cases. And um, the three books, four books that I mentioned, or three different people, they are extremely successful, right? They're like movie stars and uh, they've been on Saturday Night Live. But I mean, they, they were grinding it out for years before they got anything to work. They were um, just obsessed with whatever it is that they were working on, whether it was sketch or stand up or whatever. So it was super interesting to listen to those and just hear the behind the scenes, all the stories, all the politics and stuff like that at uh, Saturday Night Live. So check those out. Um, I'm gonna hop over here. Derek is on, Brandon, what's up? Um, and moving on, I'm also, I, I read a lot of fiction too. I probably read more fiction in the last couple years than I, than I have been reading for nonfiction. I used to read a lot of the like business books and productivity books, and I, I still do. I actually have like, a list of them. I have a few books that I picked up that I have not read yet and a couple Kindle books on my Kindle that I haven't read yet that are nonfiction. And I'll probably start setting aside a little more time to read those during um, the day, which is great. But I like to read the um, fiction just before bed. And um, I, I like Stephen King a lot. Um, Every now and then I get a little bored listening to um, or reading Stephen King stuff because it can be a little dark um, to say the least, but I'll skip around to like uh, like a James Patterson type book, some crime drama that moves pretty quick. Love those kind of books. Um, and they kind of help me kind of decompress from the day. It's very nice, very nice. And then I like fall asleep like a little faster and I'm not thinking about like my problems of uh, like create creative like business solutions or anything like that. I'm just uh, reading fiction, getting into the story and all that. 
So with that said, I'm going to run a clip here. So maybe I can answer a few questions. And this clip is uh, actually from Dom Well. So I interviewed Dom and he is the founder of Human Proof Designs, but he sold it, um, I guess, last year. And now he's running on Folio. So I, I did a full interview. If you're interested in hearing the full interview, you could search for it on the channel. And um, I need to catch up with Dom. I haven't talked to him in a few months, but need to check on things, see how he's doing, maybe another interview and that sort of thing. In this clip, Dom is going to talk about imposter syndrome and whether or not it goes away and just how he deals with it. I don't know how I kept going, really. Um, I think it was because there was so much to learn and so many different things to get excited about, which was definitely, uh, I guess it hindered me to some extent as well, because, you know, there's the shiny object syndrome and I was being like, maybe I'll do like local lead gen or maybe I'll try and do like CPA networks, like stuff like Peerfly and uh, for a while, I was on Squidoo and those sites. So those things definitely slowed my progress. But because there was always something new to try, I guess it always meant that when I failed with something, I was like, oh, well, I'll try that thing instead. Or I'll, I'll try a different niche instead. And so I just kind of something motivated me to not give up, I guess, because I had seen enough people succeeding that I felt like it must be possible. Like, I, I think my biggest doubt was not that it was possible. It was that I could do it uh, because I've always been a bit of an underachiever. Um, and so I was like in the back of my mind, something was like, yeah, but just because someone else is going to succeed doesn't mean you will. But I don't know. I guess I just kind of lied to myself. I bs to myself enough that eventually it became true. I was like, no, I can do it. Um, and I really just, there were lots of small things as well. Like I was able to kind of, like maybe my first website didn't do great, but I got better at installing WordPress. Like I remember the very first website, I couldn't figure anything out with WordPress. Like what's the difference between a page and a post and all of that. And so the next time I set up a site, I was like, oh, that, that, this was much easier. And then maybe my second website made $10 in a month. Um, and so my third website, I felt like, well, I can make a little bit of money and I can set a website up. So I don't know. I just, it just kept getting better every time. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, to be honest, I still feel like it's the same process. <laughs> like it's just, every, the numbers are a little bit bigger now. Yep. And actually that was my next question as you were making that statement. It's like, does that feeling go away? Cause I know it doesn't for me. It's like you know, partially imposter syndrome and you know there's a lot of labels for it but at the end of the day you just don't know if what you're doing is going to work even if you've done it a couple times so has it gone away for you specifically for like on folio or are you like yeah 100 percent like this is a go um no i think it does stay i think maybe it changes slightly um like basic stuff like you you see someone else is doing the same niche as you or the same just the same idea and you're like oh no and then it's like come on you, you should know by now that competitors are a good thing because it validates your idea and also you know you're there's always going to be other people so you still have these thoughts and these doubts but i think they they're a lot easier to dismiss now because you're like ah, like what am i doing like shut up you know you, mm -hmm. you push them aside whereas when you get them in the beginning you you haven't got that kind of confidence bank to to make a withdrawal from so it's um it's yeah it's, it's harder in the beginning but i don't think those feelings ever go away mm -hmm. you just get better at dealing with them yeah yeah totally well, i was just looking for validation for myself i guess since i still feel that sort of uh you know indecision at yeah. times and you're nervous and you don't know if it's going to work and you just have to push through all right, that was Dom Wells over at Onfolio. So check out Onfolio. They um, have a variety of services, but uh, generally they are, they're helping people grow sites. Um, it looks like David's on. David Miles, what's up? Hope things are well with you. And I'm going to hop back, answer a couple questions before I play another clip. And I think 
Alwain Gray, longtime uh, member of the community here, asked this. Do you ever consider doing drop shipping or Amazon FBA? No. Sure don't. So I could branch out and do other things or I could can just keep doing the same thing that I know how to do. And that's kind of where I uh, spend my time. So I do have other interests, um, but I have been branching out into like podcasting or more YouTube or more like sort of creative things that maybe there's not a clear payoff at the end, but generally is more interesting because I'm doing different things, for example, Um, learning different skills, and it's not like purely like money driven, which is fine. But at some point, you know, if if that's like how I'm making decisions, like, hey, I need to work on this thing so I can make more money, um, not as interesting to me. I do like making and collecting money. I like that. But um, there are other like paths and at some point it's just like, okay, I need to like sort of steer into a direction that makes me like happy and I enjoy doing it. And sometimes you have to shift. Sometimes you're down a path, you're doing this thing, you don't know how it's going to pan out. Like the podcast, for example, like I'm talking about things that I'm interested in as far as affiliate marketing goes, some random stuff. Um, But soon I am probably, I need to talk to a couple of my my friends around here, but there are a handful of like um, financial independence kind of bloggers, so FI bloggers in the area, and I am interested in the topic. And there's an in- there's a gap, right? There's there's overlap in the audience because people that want to be financially independent are often looking for side hustles or things to do, and then our audience here, we're into affiliate marketing, but there's probably people out there who are making a lot of money and you don't know what to do with your money. And maybe you should be investing it. Maybe you're hoarding cash. So I did this for a little while, just hoarding cash. And you're like, well, as long as I'm not going to lose money, I'm happy. But there's probably a better, smarter way to do those things. So I'm going to start talking about not necessarily investing, but just like what to do with money when you have it. Um, the other part of the equation is a ton of people that email me say, I'm paycheck to paycheck. I have a lot of debt. Um, I need to make more money so I could pay off debt. And they're trying to, you know, dig out of the hole. And then at that point, do, you know, save money, do whatever, travel, do things that are fun. So I'll probably be talking about that stuff more in the future. Super interested in the topics. And then I happen to live close by and I'm friends with some people that are very um, well known in the area. So I may be able to get some good people on the show and kind of, I mean, again, there's an overlap of the audience, but like people don't know it. So just curious people in the, in the audience here that are live in the chat, let me know, like, are you, are you struggling to figure out like what to do with, with the money? What do you do with your money? Are you saving for retirement? Are you, did you save for your retirement in your corporate job? You're maxing out your 401k. Do you have a Roth? Buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. Index funds, all that business. We got Be Best on here as well. And Dennis is telling us about improving site speed by removing AdSense and by also using raw HTML tables, which I've talked about for years. It is not a good economic pitch for me because I could try and sell solutions to like plugins, uh, your tables and all that stuff. But instead, I generally tell people do HTML tables. They're free and they load fast. So that's that's my that's my recommendation. Agers, what's going on? We got Carl. How are you? Um, Palash, what's going on? And Tom from New Orleans, must be nice and warm and humid down there. And Kent, how's it going? All right, I'm going to give a little shout out for my friend, uh, Ron Stefanski. A good friend of mine, I talk to him every couple of weeks. We're sort of, it, it's kind of a mastermind group, but really it's just him and I chatting. So there's a lot of like casual 
conversation, but both of us work um, from home in our home office. So it is nice to just have a conversation with someone who understands our industry and what we're working on. Cool thing with Ron, a lot of people may know this, he publishes income reports every month and he has since he started back in 2014. So that means he has a long record of how his growth has been slow, but he's doing great right now. He's making about 20K per month profit. His um, his expenses and his revenue coming in, they're all outlined very, very carefully. The cool thing is Ron is, is giving a little push for YouTube coming up. So I highly encourage you, there's a link in the description, um, Ron's income report for December 2019. There's a link there. He talks about it. Go over there, leave a comment, let him know that you you found him because I told you to go over there and look at it. Don't leave right now, but um, just put it put it on your radar. I'm going to be probably collaborating some with Ron since we're we're buddies. So we'll help each other out there. And he he's making most of his money from display ads. Um, which is different than, than what I talk about. More, more similar to uh, like a John Dykstra over at Fat Stacks blog as well. So with that said, I'm going to play a clip from Ron. Um, I did a full interview with him and he's talking about like not waiting for perfection, just execute, start doing work. There's no replacement for like getting experience doing a thing. So you can read about launching a site you can read about like uh, riding a bike, swimming, having sex, but as we all know, got to get your uh, <laughs> got to get in the pool. I'll, I'll use that analogy. Got to get in the pool if you want to learn how to swim. You can't read about it. So, here's Ron. At the time, I would say I'm trying to think. I would think that it was probably around about I'd say maybe about 150 total pages. Um, but it was mostly focused on, again, that database type of, you know, let's just use the security guard training as an example. It was mostly built around that. So let's just say about 150 pages uh, is where I launched it. And then I started to see traffic and I wasn't too concerned with monetization at the time because um, that's always something you can figure. There's always a way to make money. There's always a way to make money. So like, yeah, I think around 150 is where I really did it nowadays. If you would ask me now where I would what I would do, you know, now that I know a lot more and I've been around for a while. Um, I would probably say usually no less than like 25 pages or 25 posts, um, is when I'd really launch something. Um, but it depends on your strategy. Like if you're doing 25 informational pieces of content and you launch, you might start to get some traffic after about six months is when I think that the, the Google sandbox, you get out of it, so to speak. Um, so you might take that, but then it's like, okay, now you have informational content content for 25 articles. You don't have a way to make money. So it's like, you know, like now you need to start doing affiliate stuff, you know, so it, it, it depends on your strategy. There's a lot, but yeah, I would say like you want to have 25 well-written posts. Like don't just throw out 500 words of, of garbage. That's not going to do it for you. So about how long are the, the posts that you have generally? When, the, when there are questions, um, I would say mostly, I, I usually, the rule of thumb is like when I sign my writer, 75 to a thousand, 750, sorry, mm -hmm. 750 to a thousand words is typically on the low end. Um, on the high end, I might go up to like 2,000, 2,250, like maybe 2,500. But I know some people are like, oh, publish the longer content and this, that, and the other. I don't believe that that's – this is just a personal belief. I don't think that that's going to be sustainable. I think eventually Google is going to be like, hey, uh, you know, you have these 10,000, 20,000, you know, word of things. Um, yeah, right now you might get some long tail. But I don't think that works because it's so hard to navigate and like – I don't know. I mean, that's my thought. I, I know the argument of like, well, there's longer time on page and all this and that, but I don't personally believe in that. I would rather create a URL and a title tag and a page that specifically answers one query about one thing. If there's things that are really, really similar, then yes, tie them into that and maybe make a different like heading. But in general, um, yeah, around 750 to 1,000 is, is where I stay. So Right. All right, that was Ron Stefanski, good buddy of mine. Do check out his channel. He is going to be publish a lot, publishing a lot more videos in the near future, um, starting here in 2020. So I, th I think maybe he saw how awesome my channel was, and he was like, 
I have so much more hair than Doug and I'm younger and more handsome. Maybe I could do better than Doug. I don't know. He, he didn't tell me that specifically, but I'm just guessing. Don't tell him I said that. I don't think he watches these, so he, he will never know that I was talking smack. All right, so let me hop back. I saw a question out there that I sort of skipped. Um, Mick Chu 28 is, uh, that, that's just a perfect, perfect classic, like screen name <laughs> for comments and questions. So Mick Chu 28, I remember you've been around. So he says this, he or she says this, I have a long tail keyword with seven words. And when you search all in title, the first seven words, your page shows up. But when you do all in title for the six words, it doesn't show up. And then five words, it doesn't show up. So I'm not really sure. Um, I've never checked anything that way. Um, so I, I just want to ask, why, why were you checking it like that? Um, this seems weird to me. I, I don't know, like, what's the point even? But Brandon mentions that your shorter keyword may have higher competition and you may not rank, blah, blah, blah. What I would do, um, yeah, I'm not sure what you're trying to verify. Some people were speculating maybe it's the indexing or some stuff like that. But if you really want to check to see if it's indexed, you can do the all in title like you're talking about and then also do the advanced search site and then whatever your domain name is to filter out all the others. I'm not sure what you're trying to find by doing that. So that may not be a helpful comment, but anyway, you asked it, so I, I try to answer it. Okay, moving on, I think um, uh, Babar, what's up? You ask how to run a simple site and rank it fast and easy. Um, there's no way to do a fast and easy thing that's effective and also worthwhile. So I would direct you to nichesiteproject.com, sign up for the email list, start reading stuff, watch some other videos. You'll be in better shape if you're, if you're thinking, hey, I, I'm not trying to make things fast and easy. Palash says this, Recently, I created a niche site. You wrote content, but I'm confused about the quality. How can I check the quality? So number one, um, I'll mention that I'm an affiliate for any of the products that I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to tell you to check out Grammarly. Grammarly is a way to check the content. Um, it's a free plugin, but there's also a paid version. The paid version is probably what you want um, or you should just hire a native speaker in whatever language you're writing in to edit and check over your content. Very important to get a native speaker for whatever language you're aiming for. So whatever that may be, maybe if you're still trying to assess the quality, you could hire a couple editors and get their feedback. If they're telling you, hey, this looks like garbage, then it's not good. Uh, but if you get a couple opinions, then it's probably better. As I'm scrolling down, Derek asks a fun question here. Oh, and Danish is on. Martin, what's up? Thanks, folks, for hopping on. Manure. Derek says this. You're interested in tax solutions since your income stream is growing. You like to hear how I take advantage of the breaks and if you're using an LLC in your niche site. So number one. I just, I pay taxes. I haven't identified any tax breaks. You know, people are like, yeah, man, you can just, uh, you know, expense this and blah, blah, blah. I pay a lot of money in taxes. The, and I did before too, but you don't notice it as much because it's deducted from your, your payroll um, and your, your paycheck. So you just get your take home pay and that's just what it is, you know? And, when you're when you're running your own business, you have to pay quarterly. So quarterly, you got to pay your taxes. That means you got to set aside some huge chunk of money. Usually, I would recommend you know talk to an accountant, but I'm going to recommend roughly like 35 to 40 percent. Just put it aside. That's a little bit more than you probably need, but it gives you a little uh, flexibility and leeway. Um, so that when your tax bill comes up, you can pay it and it's no big deal. So keep that in mind. Now, as far as um, using an LLC, so I formed uh, a 
entity, right? So it could be an LLC, depending on your state or whatever. It could be a corporation or some other form. But basically, you want to have like some organization. And then you need to file with the IRS that it's uh, an S corp. So you have to get an EIN, employee identifi employer identification number. It's like the social security number, but for your business. And then you can make sure you're classified as an S corp. That is pretty important. There's some reasons why, which I don't know exactly off the top of my head right now, but you want to classify yourself as an S corp. And then what you'll be able to take advantage of the breaks is um, with payroll. So you will save a little bit on payroll. It'll probably end up being, I think it's like, say about six to eight percent. Um, and that is like social security, um, unemployment insurance, that portion. So normally this is getting super boring very fast. And I don't know much about accounting, but basically when you have a job, you're paying part of the unemployment and social security, and then your employer is paying like the other half. If you are not classified as an S corp or LLC or some kind of thing, and you're not doing your payroll properly, you will have to pay both sides. But if you are classified properly and doing the payroll properly, bookkeeper, accountant, get a professional to set this up for you, then you'll say that roughly 6% or whatever it is, 15. I don't remember. I, I think it's like, it may be seven and a half percent. I can't remember exactly, but you will save in that area. There's probably a threshold that you can like, you're not going to save any money until after some certain point. Um, but yeah, Derek, that's the general idea. S corp is what you want. It's pretty cheap to form an LLC um, or a corporation or whatever. You do that at the state level. And then um, just make sure you're paying your taxes quarterly for state if you have them and federal. Always pay your taxes. They, they will find you. <laughs> they always find you. All right, Manure, uh, Merrick, what's up? Easy Wire, you finally joined a live session. Excellent. Okay. Quick other shout out to a channel and... Um, this channel is called Money Lab. I put a link in the description. There is a person named uh, Matt. Let me look. I'm going to try and phonetically say his name. It is Matt Giovansky. Giovansky. So a couple people pinged me about Matt's channel because he lives in the area. He lives in the Boulder area. And... I followed him for a short time um, a couple years ago, kind of checked out a couple things, but we talk about affiliate marketing. I have heard him on a couple podcasts. And the cool thing is he's into beer brewing. In fact, he was sort of facilitating some of these uh, homebrew sessions at the co-working space that I go to, the Mr. Money Mustache HQ or MMM HQ. And um, I was able to try some of his beers, drink beers with him, talk about beer. And then I was like, hey, you know what? We have a similar audience. We talk about similar stuff. We should definitely collaborate. So we've been trying to coordinate. You know, we met just before the holidays and we got busy. We were both out of town. So we sh we should be able to like hook up, talk about some stuff. And he, he has a couple podcasts, I believe. He has a YouTube channel, which it looks like he doesn't put as much time in. There's a lot of videos, but not a ton of subscribers, even though his content is super awesome and he's been around. So I think um, it's going to be exciting to collaborate with him. Um, great dude. Uh, likes beer. Like, I think we'll be able to like have beer and like talk about affiliate marketing. And um, I think it'll be great. So I know a lot of people have emailed me and just said, hey, you should hook up with Matt, blah, blah, blah. And I, it happened organically, which is kind of the, the preferred way. So over a, a brew kettle is how, how we started chatting. And um, yeah, so we shared beers. I brought some beer. He had some beer. And it was just kind of a, a small crew there. So very cool. All right. Um, Sita says, um, you'd like to know what to do with the money. Uh, mostly to make even more money and increase income streams without having to do a ton of work. You're already busy with your sites. Okay. Well, I think 
what you just said, those are like counter points. So like make more money with less work because I'm already busy. So usually there's not a solution for that. I want to do something easy and make more money and I want to be able to do it in my own time frame. So usually um, it's work basically. So, all right. Oh, Tom says you're one to two years into retirement. You're an you were an IT project director with about 6000 a month in retirement and you want to look to add things to your portfolio while you're making extra money in retirement while you travel. And just starting, you built two to three websites, starting to gather content in a moment and you enjoy the channel. Awesome. That sounds very cool. And, and Tom, did you, um, it'll be interesting to hear more from you. Did you retire like with the normal time frame that people are aiming for, meaning how old are you? Just curious. Did you retire early? David mentions that Ron has some great content. And EasyWire says, well, informational content that is keyword golden ratio compliant bring enough traffic. What do you mean by enough traffic? You have some keywords which has 20, which have 20 and 70 search volume. Okay. So what is enough traffic for you? That's something you have to define easy wire. David says, do I see any benefit in having different domains for the show and the blog versus having it all under the same name? Or do you do it just to keep things simple? Basically the simple aspect. Um, I think I wanted to have like separation in case I wanted to take things in a little bit different direction. For example, on the Doug show, um, I may have talked about this before you hopped on, David, but I'll, I'll probably talk about like more random stuff that are 100% not related to affiliate marketing and niche site project in any way. I could have like had everything under the same umbrella, but I feel like it gives me a little bit more flexibility. Maybe not much, but I was just like, you know what? I'll just set up a different domain, keep it totally separate. And I'm not sure if that helps or hurts. It all sort of like blends together at the end of the day. So there potentially could be more link building to like a single domain, but I don't think it matters uh, like, cause I'm not getting a lot of like organic traffic, but I could have gotten like more links. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And Martin says you've followed the KGR formula and it's three months old. Congratulations. Good job. You're getting in traffic. How's it going out there? All right. Merrick says, how soon would you start on-page optimization and what criteria would you implement post-prioritization to know which to optimize first? You should do on-page as you're publishing it. You know, you should do a good job initially. And then as far as what criteria to implement post prioritization and what to optimize first. So that would be like a whole course worth of information. So I can't answer it very well in this format. Um, but Kyle Roof has a great on-page SEO course. I highly recommend it. I don't know if I have a link in the show notes here today, but if you... Shoot me an email. I can get you a link to that. I'm an affiliate for that course, but it's very, very good. All right. Um, and Tom, Tom retired when he was, uh, I guess, 51. So very, very impressive. Um, and there's a lot of folks um, that we run into around here because there's a lot of FI, financial independent kind of folks around here. At least those are the people I'm trying to hang out with. <laughs> And those are, um, those are a lot of folks, a lot of the members at the co-working space. There's actually a happy hour later today that I'm going to be checking out. All right. And EasyWire is saying you mean 20. So this is the callback to the question before. You have uh, 20 and 70 search volume. It doesn't seem like a great number. Um, you're also planning to start your own site. So easy wire, again, like I said, it depends on how you're defining enough traffic. I don't know what your goals are. I'm not, I don't know what you're trying to do. Um, it sounds like since you haven't started your site yet, you're a beginner. And I recommend that you just 
follow the definition and the formula for the KGR if you want to. If you want to take another route, if you want to aim for higher com competition, bigger keywords, that is totally fine. That is a different route. It'll probably be harder. It will take longer. And generally, things are... <laughs> Things are harder than you think that they're going to be, and it will take you longer. So if you're already making it harder on yourself, it's going to be tougher. So I recommend you just follow like all the, there's a ton of people in here who are using the KGR and it's working really well for them. So I'd recommend just stick with that. If you want to do the more competitive stuff, I think there's other people that can maybe guide you more they'll probably tell you, hey, it's gonna take 18 months or two years or something like that, but I'm trying to get you results faster. So that's my recommendation. And yep, EasyWire says you just, you will stick to the KGR. Cool, that's, that's better, that's, that's what I recommend. <laughs> All right, I think I got another clip here. What is this one for? Oh yeah, John Dykstra. So my friend over at Fat Stacks blog is uh, talking about how affiliate sites maybe aren't for everyone. So two people that I played clips from today, Ron and John, they both make most of their money from display ads. I talk a lot about affiliate marketing, but it's not the only way. Um, earlier, someone asked about drop shipping, Amazon FBA. Those are totally valid. You can make a lot of money there. You could do Kindle publishing. You can um, do email marketing. You could do almost anything. Like the sky is the limit. You have plenty of options out there. So if anyone is telling you like this is the only way, you know that they're either selling you something or they don't know what they're talking about. Um, but there's plenty of aspects, plenty of different ways you could make money online. You can blend some of these ideas together and end up with like a sort of hybrid situation. But anyway, John is gonna talk about display ads and why they're flexible and why he likes display ads over uh, affiliate marketing in most situations. For the first half, I would say, of being online here, I did all affiliate stuff uh, because I read constantly affiliates, you know, that's where the money is and, you know, ads are a waste of money. It's pennies versus dollars. And, and I bought into it. And uh, I don't know, I started up a niche site at one point and doing the affiliate thing, hammering away, and was going nowhere. And I thought, I did have an AdSense account. This is way back when AdSense was fairly easy to get. Um, so I just had one languishing and, and I decided, oh, I'll throw a few ads on there and just see what happens. And it was like, it, it, I mean, for relative to what the affiliate stuff was doing, it was amazing. And, and that was like right away, I just saw the potential of, of what ads could do for a site with traffic. So I completely shifted and uh, I still do a fair amount of affiliate, but the, the display ads have definitely uh, exceeded the affiliate stuff. And so, yeah, I I shifted focus and now pretty much every site I, I run except for FastStacks is, is ad supported. And uh, I, I like it and I like it primarily because I love the flexibility. Uh, coming back to flexibility again. I like flexibility in my life, but I like it for publishing too, because with affiliate stuff, if you want to make money with affiliate links, you have to publish a certain type of content, which we call buyer intent. And there needs to be an intent behind it uh, where somebody's going to look, click, and potentially buy. If you put a bunch of affiliate links on just some general informational stuff, your chance of generating any, any clicks and, and sales are very low. So, uh, but with that, it's, you can write on any topic you like, and I, I really like that. I like to be able to publish on just some random informational article that I find interesting or topic uh, that's related to the niche, and I could still monetize that, and that was really freeing. So that's that's that was a huge point, and I was able to really go after a lot of topics with almost no competition uh, or very little competition and focus on publishing content and know that that content would be monetized. And I'm not saying this each piece of content makes a fortune from ads, it doesn't, but it's in the aggregate. I'm able to publish more content, I'm able to go after more traffic, and so it's a it's a higher traffic volume uh, model, but it, it's for me it's worked out very nicely. Yes, and 
I'll put links and stuff, but you do publish some income reports and just say for about uh, like the last several months, like what's the average profit from your portfolio of sites that you publish income reports on? Right, it ranges from right now ranges about I would say thirty to forty five thousand US a month. Um, my expenses fluctuate a little bit, and uh, obviously revenue fluctuates. Um, but yeah, that, that's the range we're talking about right now. Okay, excellent. I just want to give everyone like the scope of what we're talking about. So most people would say that serious money um, beyond like you know full time what most people are are making like in general. So that's awesome. Congratulations, John. All right, that was John Dykstra, and definitely check out his stuff. I don't sign up for many email lists out there, but John's is excellent. There's a link in the description where you can check out his income reports and stuff. So he's been publishing those for quite a while. Um, Not quite as detailed as Ron's because um, Ron's has a lot of narrative in there, which is good. You hear like personal stuff, what's going on with him. In fact, if you read Ron's like income reports, over the past several years it's like reading his journal or something i mean he goes pretty deep they're they're long updates so pretty cool uh john's are a little bit shorter but all the facts are there you can see he's making a lot of money and uh it's kind of crazy like he's spending more on like expenses than you know we were making when we first got started like at all so it's kind of crazy as the business grows like you're you're paying thousands of dollars uh, for content each month, for example, but you're still making you know, 40K a month. He um, has awesome sort of bite-sized small courses. There are several of them. Probably what, whatever um, sort of situation you're in, like one of the courses is a great fit for you. And they're, they're bite-sized. They're like how to improve revenue with like display ads, for example, or keyword research. They're, they're, specific skills for certain things. So if you're like, hey, I need to figure out how to do a little bit better with X, Y, or Z, then John probably has a course for it. Uh, One of the newest ones, super popular, his content templates. So he has sites that are huge. They have like thousands of pieces of content and he's publishing multiple times per week. It's really insane. So he has a lot of writers, a lot of writers doing different content and he has all his templates available. I think there are 17 or 18. I think he may have added one more. So highly recommend you check that out. Paul mentions that John has long content in his emails and they're fun to read. They're interesting. They're either entertaining and or helpful. Usually a combo of the two, which is all you could ask for with an email, like a little funny, dry humor, Um, So anyway, John's a great guy. Highly recommend you check out his stuff. Thanks everyone who hit the thumbs up out there. So if I answered your question, like the video somehow, really appreciate it. Like to see um, a few more, you know, I hope hope I'm helpful here. But if I answered your question, it's a good indication that you should like the video. Any other questions out there, by the way? Any other questions? And... I'm going to give a shout out for a couple other products that I enjoy. So if you were looking for a way to support me and you need to improve your hosting load load time, I like SiteGround. I'm using SiteGround for most of my sites at this point. I have an account with a smaller company as well for niche site project, but I'm hosting most of my other sites over at SiteGround. They do a great job. It's basically... Um, support. So I think a lot of times hosting is fine. It's fairly, it's a commodity. You can get hosting, good hosting. That's going to work. Um, it's going to be pretty good most of the time, but if you ever have an issue and you need help, SiteGround seems to be one of the few companies that can actually get you help, um, quickly via chat in minutes. So highly recommend you check it out and I'm an affiliate. So that helps support the channel and all that stuff. I talked about uh, Grammarly earlier. So there's a free version, check out the free version. If you like it, then you could sign up for um, like the premium version. It gives you writing tips. It will also help your, uh, help you check for duplicate plagiarized content. And Paul is asking a question on 
What's my view on duplicate content? Important impact on rankings. Um, I would say just in general, don't have duplicate content. So I don't know if you have a deeper question, um, you know, important impact on rankings. Um, I don't know, that's a statement. So what do you mean exactly? Do, are you suggesting that if you have duplicate content, like your rankings drop a ton or something different? So not not 100% sure. Basically, if you have duplicate content, you're not doing yourself any favors. So you may as well have unique content. That's going to be better. Stuart gives another vote for SiteGround, one of the few hosting companies not owned by EIG. Uh, Merrick also says Link Whisper is awesome. Thanks for the recommendation. Very good. Yeah, I the tool is improving a lot. Um, right when it launched, it um, there were some bugs. There were some bugs. I heard about um, some issues with certain people, but uh, generally, it's been improving. More functionalities added. It works great. Stephen uh, Buchanan says you just added 20 kg art articles to your site and you ordered 20 more. Awesome. Okay, Paul says, I meant duplicate content from other websites. Someone copied your content. Okay. So I don't, f I mean, someone copied your content, um, then I would have it taken down. I don't think it automatically like drops your content rankings or anything uh, generally google knows that you published it first um because you're you know it was indexed beforehand so google knows that i think um just generally if you didn't give them permission you could just send them an email tell them to take it down give them like 24 hours if they don't then file a dmca violation with um, their hosting company and then it'll they'll take their site down basically they move pretty quick on that like faster than you would expect and if they don't get if they don't get a response from the the uh, webmaster then the hosting company just turns off their account so pretty effective there's no way around it um sean little says duplicate content does not drop your rankings duplicate content is ignored as a ranking factor if detected okay and if you have a link um sean that would be great. I don't know if that's true specifically, but generally, I mean, if you, I would, you know, that's your intellectual property. So I would, you know, guard it. And if you didn't give them permission, tell them to take it down. I do know some sites like syndicate content. And because content is syndicated, uh, sometimes set up by whoever is publishing the content, but I've actually had some issues with um, I think I think it was Neil Patel linked to my site a couple times and Neil Patel's content is syndicated all over the place like crazy. It's just hundreds hundreds of sites syndicate Neil Patel's stuff. I don't know how who set that up if that's part of his ranking plan or whatever, but it's uh, syndicated all over the place to the point that I um, got a manual penalty. Um, and basically had to go and tell people, Hey, like take my link out of there because I got a manual penalty and a couple people did. And then I told, you know, reconsideration request, uh, to Google and they, they lifted it. It was fine. Cause they saw, Hey, it's syndicated. Someone linked to you that content syndicated in hundreds of places online and you didn't do anything to, to cause it. So I have to cough. Oh man, how do I mute? Okay, and uh, Michael says duplicate content is ignored based on the content creation date. If someone copied your content, legally owned copyrighted content, it's D DMCA time. Yep, exactly. And I've had that a couple times where someone just copied images, um, they copied content or a couple paragraphs or whatever and yeah i you could try to email them and they generally are going to ignore it and then you just go to the hosting company and they lock it down for you so all right cool any other questions before we finish up today recently i published a 
I uh, recently published a video on the age site case study. So if you missed it, I recommend you check it out. Published it on Wednesday. So it was sort of an end of the year review. I got great feedback um, for going deeper into expenses and just talking a little bit more. Please check it out. You'll probably find it um, on the channel. You can search for it. You'll be able to find it. And um, thanks, Michael, for the note there on duplicate content and Sean as well. Sounds like that that totally makes sense. Um, and it matches up with what I expect, where Google knows you published it ahead of time, especially if it's like years old. Google knows you're the original source. And typically, I mean, I think for syndication, like as long as you published it like the day before and then it syndicated after that, like, Google knows you're the original source out there and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for tuning in. If you haven't listened to the podcast, please check it out. Doug.show. All right. Doug.show. And it is available on the um, directories out there. So basically any anyone that you're into, it's probably going to uh, have the Doug show. Stuart says, do I read the Just Start Reddit there are tons of great case studies and discussions about niche sites. Maybe some good video ideas in there too. Um, Stuart, I don't. I find Reddit's weird in that it seems like um, a lot of the people are assholes. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it's weird over there. So I kind of stay out of it. I, I've peeked over there because a lot of people have mentioned, hey, um, there's interesting discussions, blah, blah, blah. I may take you up on the idea of the video ideas, because that's good, or podcast ideas. Pretty good overall. Um, yeah, I think it, it's just the culture, perhaps, of, of Reddit. Like, I thought about getting active over there, but um, it's like if I tried to just live in YouTube comments, like everyone would just bust my fucking balls over there um and tell me how i'm wrong and you know i don't care that much so if like i was going over there to try and help people and then people like tear apart everything that i'm saying um i don't need i don't need that uh even though at some point in time i was like man it would be a great marketing channel to just like get people to trust me but the good part is i put out so much information that like it has filtered its way in there so even if people are like hey uh, this guy doug is bullshit <laughs> then then um they're having a conversation about me which is good enough oh and this is <laughs> this is um good here so uh, paul does mention you're gonna have a beer tonight excellent i'm gonna have a few today stewart said uh it's a good observation hard to disagree with and uh, yeah, okay. So it's good. Whenever I mention Reddit, people may be mean to me. Everyone's like, yeah, they probably will. Um, so basically, I just stay out. Maybe um, at some point I'll hop over and then people will just trash <laughs> trash me. But it'll, it could be funny. Um, but at the same time, I do know um, negative comments on the internet are... Uh, just everywhere. So if I could just pull myself out of the situation, which even in like YouTube comments, I mean, I try to stay active, but every now and then I'm just like, all right, I can't, I, I can't deal with this. All right. Tom says, does domain age matter that much? You have three domains that are seven years old and you're thinking of using those. So it doesn't, it's good to have an older domain, like in a general sense. Um, if those sites didn't have like any links or any activity for seven years. I don't think it's going to make a huge, massive difference. But like once you get started, um, it's not a bad thing to have the age on your site. <laughs> so um, Sean says I should make my own subreddit. Funny. Um, oh, and Paul says Facebook groups or Reddit don't know where info is better actually. Yeah, and I was gonna say, I got out of the Facebook groups for sort of the same reason, and like, I just, I'm out. I, I am not into Facebook anymore. 
Right. And I think the big thing, maybe I'm both places, but I've seen Facebook groups um, primarily where people just know a lot of information, but like they don't have experience. So there's a lot of like regurgitation of information that may or may not be accurate. So um, yeah, I just, I kind of tell people to avoid Facebook groups. It's not going to help you, in my opinion. I hate them. So, um, (laughs) oh, Paul says they don't like KGR on Reddit. Cool. That means more keywords for us. And there's some good, good discussion on the age of the domain. So generally, I mean, like if you have an older domain, use it Um, over time, let's say in a year and a half from now, when there's more activity on the site, um, you potentially... You potentially like let's say you're gonna sell it let's say you sell it Tom in the future and they're like wow this domain is um, like 10 years old that's great all else being equal and let's say you build out the site it's getting traffic you got the links you have revenue traffic all this stuff um, all else being equal like if someone's just looking at the two domains they potentially whether it's like misplaced or not um, someone may see the older domain and, and think, hey, this is like a little more authoritative, a little more trustworthy because it's been around for a while, even though maybe nothing happened in the first seven years. Okay. And I, I see I see one, one last question there um, that I'll just skip, but you could find links, uh, buddy. If you if you're asking a question, you can uh, don't use so many exclamation points. So people that are watching the chat, you know what I'm talking about. But it sounds like a like a teenage kid, like a middle school girl, like oh my god, I have a big problem. So yeah, just check out the links out there. <laughs> check out the links uh, in the description. Thanks to everyone for hopping in. Hope you're enjoying the Friday live streams. These are way better than the nonsense before where I would just answer rando questions from people that may or may not have been like just messing with me. Sadly, they probably weren't. They were probably real questions. But anyway, everybody have a good weekend. I'm going to go have a couple beers later today, chat with some folks at the co-working space, and um, it should be awesome. So we'll catch you next week and have a great weekend.